Welcome back to Rob Liefeld Appreciation Season on Crypto Comics, and today we are going to talk about Extreme Destroyer. This is the final crossover ever published by Image Comics and Rob Liefeld's Extreme Studios. Before Rob left to permanently work at Maximum Press, where Youngblood would end the run on its second volume, which is what this comic book is from. I got these, they're all in the poly bags. Uh, I pre-cut the poly bags before we started the video because I didn't want to waste your time, beautiful people. But we're gonna get to see some unique stuff here. We've got the Extreme Destroyer Prologue. We have Youngblood Issue 4, which is part four of Extreme Destroyer. I don't have the whole thing, but I don't think we're gonna need it. I have New Man, part three. This is New Man number one. This is New Force number one which is a takeoff on New Men. You remember how like Kodiak was in New Men and now they have New Man and New Force? I know, it's kind of weird. And then we're gonna end it with the Extreme Destroyer epilogue, which is the only one of these that didn't come in a poly bag when I bought them from mycomicshop.com. So you know what? We're just gonna open these poly bags up here, huh? Let's do it. Let's see what's actually in here. There's a card in here. And I don't know, maybe there's more. Maybe there's like a secret poster on the inside. Wouldn't that be fun? I know there's someone out there right now that's like, are you nuts? Why would you take that out of the poly bag, dude? Cause comics are for reading. That's why they create these comic books. Extreme Destroyer, exclusive collectible gaming card. How about that? Kid Supreme. Oh, his strength is an eight. Agility is an eight. Energy is a five. Combat is a seven. I wonder if this actually was ever made into a card game. Kind of interesting, huh? Let's keep going though, what do you say? Ooh, Riptide looking very, very sexy indeed. I wish it told us who drew her. That art looks very familiar to me, but I can't quite place my thumb on it. Let's keep going, huh? New man. I'm really curious to see what all these are about too. I did not collect much Youngblood Volume 2. I had the first issue and I had the tenth issue. That's Newman himself. Okay, great. You know, I'm inevitably going to have to just buy all these in a poly bag so I can have all the cards because I'm a completist nerd like that. Last but not least, who's it going to be? Who do you think? Will it be New Force? It's Kodiak. There he is, the big man. So here's what's gonna happen now. I am gonna go read all of these comic books. And then I'm gonna come back and we'll find out exactly how Rob Liefeld's characters from Extreme Studios departed from Image Comics. While I'm doing that, you watch this. Well, I hope you've taken the time to back Megawatt versus the Vampires of the Sun at megawattcomic.com and help me have a successful Kickstarter campaign. I greatly appreciate all of you who do. And I shame, shame, shame all of you that don't. Anyway, this is Extreme Destroyer Part 1 of 9, The Prologue. Beautiful cover by my boy, 
Rob Liefeld, here on Rob Liefeld Appreciation Season. This is written by Jim Valentino, and it is written well, because Mr. Valentino knows how to write a quality story. If you're not familiar with Jim Valentino, I would highly recommend you go into the Image Comics playlist here at Crypto Comics and check out Shadowhawk. Shadowhawk is one of my favorite stories from the glory days of Image Comics back in the 1990s, and it is definitely worth a read, for sure. Otherworldly shadows glide across the face of the earth as gargantuan vessels lock themselves in the skies above the world's greatest cities. Immensely powerful, nearly omnipotent beings, the Keep, have returned once again to claim the progeny of a virus they created and released on Earth millennia ago. Through the process of evolution, the virus manifested itself in human beings as a new gene, or new gene, as 20th century men called it, and randomly empowered select men and women with incredible abilities. When the Keep returned, centuries later, Earth's new gene-positive humans were harvested to become the superpowered slaves of the self-deified intergalactic empire. Two centuries have passed since the Keep's last earthly harvest. Scarcely a moment in the vast history of the Keep, these two centuries have yielded to man the power of atom and the ability to spawn their own genetically enhanced super beings. Yet, in a single day and night, the Keep have secured complete control over the Earth and forced an awestruck world into submission. Dedicated to Stanley and Jack Kirby. And this comic book is worthy of being dedicated to Stanley and Jack Kirby. So what do we make of all this? Well, basically the new gene are essentially the mutants of the Image Comics universe, the Extreme Studios universe. And it turns out that they were genetically enhanced by this virus that the Keep left on Earth a millennia ago. Once they were the proud complement of the mighty Catellan fleet, space stations, battle cruisers, fighter craft. Now they are little more than cosmic debris. They're shattered and mangled holes, leaving mute testimony to the indomitable power unleashed against them. It is a trail of destruction, carving an inexorable swath to a seemingly insignificant blue orb that orbits a tiny star on the outer rim of an otherwise unnotable spiral galaxy. But what in all creation could cause this type of devastation? It is a question asked untold times over countless millennia, and the answer tells the story of a reckoning and, mayhap, of redemption. It is a tale of a devourer and a destroyer. Earth, homeworld to billions of sentient beings who, until this day, occupied themselves with petty squabbles over imaginary borders or insignificant pigment variations. Today they have realized that there is something far greater than they had ever imagined, something far beyond the transitory rhetoric of their ideologies, something called the Keep. They appeared seemingly out of nowhere, and suddenly were everywhere at once. And the people of the Earth, once smug with pride over their technological prowess, now cower in terror and anticipation, and look to the skies, wondering what it is these invaders want, fearful of the answer. Hugh McDonnell here at the nation's capital, where the president remains sequestered with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, pondering our options, if any, against this invasionary force. Although no official word has come out of this White House, we are informed by our sources that the aliens call themselves the Keep. Although their purpose here remains a mystery, we do have confirmed sightings of their ships over every major metropolitan area across the globe. Mass panic has erupted in nearly every major city the world over, as reports of widespread disappearances run rampant. Excuse me, Chet. I said, have you heard anything from the United Nations, Hugh? Our live feed there is not responding. Uh, yes, Chet. As I understand it, the General Council is convening even as we speak. Delegates from every member nation are trying to determine how best to deal with the situation. One report I've received states that some very unusual speakers have been called in to offer input on the aliens. Possible motives. We've had a lot of crank calls here on that very subject, Hugh. I don't doubt that. There are plenty of people on the streets here claiming that this is the rapture, or some other end-of-the-world scenario. And you know what I find most disturbing, Chet? 
They may well be right. He is called the shepherd, and he blazes over the world like a living comet. Cold, alien eyes searching for what no one can even hazard a guess. Those who look up and witness his passing are filled with awe at the sheer majesty of his sleek, golden form, and humbled by the raw power that emanates from every fiber of his being. And he, in turn, looks down upon the wonders of man's civilizations with little but contempt. So these are the works of man, the sum of his ambition, how they pale to the wonders I have seen. They have not the slightest inkling how insignificant a race they truly are, yet they remain a race proud of what they have accomplished, even as my people were once. And, even as we did so too, do they tremble before the coming of the keep. I recall how frightened we were when the harvest came to our world, what we lost, but more importantly, what we gained. They too will come to appreciate the way, and learn to rejoice in the salvation visited upon them, even as I did so very long ago. For it is the destiny of all those who bear the fruit of the new gene to be sown like seed into the service of the keep. And even these proud and arrogant sheep shall learn who their masters truly are, and know the meaning of rejoicing in the new found knowledge. Don't worry, child, just keep walking. But they have guns. I won't let them hurt you, I promise. That's probably all that's keeping the various super beings present in line. Fear of hurting these normal people. Why are they here? What possible reason could these aliens have for abducting them? I must try to talk to Shaft. He's the only one here I recognize. Shaft and Glory first met in the pages of Glory number 8. Get in there, new Gene Chattel. You're in the service of a higher power now. New Gene? Shaft, what's going on here? Offhand, I'd say we're being taken prisoner, Glory. I do not believe this is the proper time for levity, Shaft. These people are obviously terrified. I'd say they have every right to be, too, particularly in light of what that guard said about new genes. Yeah, well, we're dependent on all of you super types to get us out of this one. Well, I, for one, am not that comfortable with the idea of being anyone's savior. You can say that again, pilot. Girth is here. Yeah, and you can say it twice and shake it for me. Because I'm not at all at home around this many costume do-gooders. Then are we to assume that all of these people are new gene positive? No, that doesn't make any sense. I don't have any superpowers. What am I doing here? I don't know, but until moments before my abduction, I believed my powers to be my Amazonian birthright. But in the wake of Diabolique's fate at the hands of the first pantheon, my mother explained that all Amazons, as well as the Pantheon, are recipients of some ancient gift bestowed on Earth by the Keep. See Glory number 9. On sale soon. I don't know anything about any gift, Glory, and I don't much care. All I do know is that I don't belong here. I'm not a new gene. Do not give in to despair, my friend. We shall find a way out of here. This I promise. And this elongated hand touches him, and he's like, what? And this doesn't make much sense to me, but <laughs> is this her hand? I, I, I couldn't figure this out, because it feels like, like he's being touched, and then turning around to confront whoever's touching him. But then you just cut to this guy, and that doesn't just, it doesn't make any sense. But that's okay. Stand to, flock. You and you are to come with us. You do not belong here. Come quietly. Or we should begin firing at random. Why do you think they singled them out? Good question. Maybe it has to do with the fact that Cabot and Battlestone are products of the government's Project Born Again. Chances are, they're not really new genes. So, they take Cabot and Battlestone, but we haven't seen Cabot and Battlestone, like, at all in any of these panels. Which is very weird. I mean, here's Battlestone, but I don't see Cabot anywhere, so... You got me! But we'll keep going, right? Then why hasn't anyone come to get me or any of these other non-powered civilians? What do I look like? The answer, man? Maybe they didn't want to hear you whining. Earth, the Pentagon. I don't think there's any mystery why we're here, Kiever. Let's get cracking. Badrock's right. I think we're all present and accounted for. 
Oh, Rubble's here. Cool. And Task. These guys are from Bloodpool. Remember Bloodpool? How could you forget it, right? Has anyone seen Shaft? I just noticed in all the confusion that he's MIA. So he's the one called Brahma. I haven't seen either of them. Battlestone is uncharacteristically absent as well. You're right about that, Die Hard. I'm afraid we have to assume that they too have been captured by the Keep. Which only makes our task of finding a way to stop them all the more urgent. And our basic problem with that remains unchanged. Yes, we have no way of defeating their obviously superior technology. Technology my ass! Look at all the power in this room. I don't care how technologically advanced they are. I say we go up there and kick some butt. I doubt seriously that we would stand a chance. They have, obviously, already captured many of our peers. I concur, Sentinel. If we really want to end this siege without needlessly endangering millions of people, we're going to have to come up with a better solution than just brute force. Now then, I'm open for any and all suggestions. Roman, do you have any ideas? Well, I've sure got one. You old farts can sit around and talk all you want, but me? I'm up for some action. And if none of you guys have the guts to do anything, I will. You tell them, Kid Supreme. Everyone keep the noise down for just a minute. There seems to be something going on at the United Nations building. I suggest we all pay attention. Someone turn up the monitors. Reports are coming in that one of the special speakers is about to address the General Assembly. Any word on who it is, Hugh? Dr. Hawkins, perhaps? No confirmations, Chet, but rumor has it that he's a... Vampire? Impossible. This is preposterous. Hear me, men and women of the Earth. I am Narcissa. My companion here is Dusk. Please, fellow delegates, hear him out. He has vital information. I have offered my services to the United States Ambassador to enlighten you about the Keep and their mission. The first thing you must understand is that this is not the first time these aliens have visited our world. What? That can't be possible. Crackpot chariots of the gods theory? I assure you, gentlemen, there is nothing crackpot about what I have to say. Even though it may surely stain your credibility tolerance, it is all nevertheless true. Ancient aliens. The Keep first came to our world in the days of humanity's dawning and infected our planet with a unique virus of their own device. I really like this panel right here. I really like this whole two-page spread. This virus infected the unborn with a new gene that would give the progeny powers their parents did not possess. These mutates would then be harvested at regular intervals by the keep to become their slaves. Most of the creatures of your ancient myths were in reality new gene-positive humans who were later harvested. This is why the dragons and fairies and trolls and lycanthropes of old are no longer found in the world today. And now, the keep of return to reap their latest crop, a generation of beings we have dubbed as superhumans. I really love this plot. Big time. I think it's a great idea. I am not the world's biggest fan of a gentleman known only as the Extreme Warrior. Central America a sleepy little village in the tropical rainforest, asleep no more. Madre dos Dios! The tranquility of the jungle is brutally shattered by the angry roar of a motorcycle. Its rider is called the Extreme Warrior. Wah, wah. Nearly unconscious, completely exhausted, he is unaware of the disruption, the sounds of his engine make. He is unaware of virtually everything, save that the only rain in this forest today is a reign of terror. <sighs> help me, must get help. Mm, he's speaking foul language. What is it you run from? Are you blind, Pedro? There is only one thing anyone is running from on this day. Translated from the Spanish. Hmm, who'd have thunk it? The space gods. Shepard. Hast thou inspected this world for our bounty? I, great Lord Imperion. They have grown much since last we were here. Have they grown too much? There is no threat here to the glory that is the keep, master. Indeed. Yet one of them seeks to assault us. Who would be so foolish? They're not foolish. Merely amusing 
in their arrogance and impetuousness. I do not share your amusement communion. Go, my shepherd, and put thee an end to this threat. I, my lord, ever your servant. I'm taking this guy and this guy and this guy. Or girl. I'm not sure what's going on under that hood. I don't want to assume that character's gender. What? Who? As if we were just going to let you space geek snap all our people? Get a clue, dorks. This is Kid Supreme you're dealing with now. Baddest of the bad, coolest of the cool. It is an Earth youth. And what is this? My bioscan reveals that he is not a new gene? Perhaps he is of alien origin, come to steal our rightful property. Halt, youth, and give me an accounting. Well, all right. Someone to play with. You must pay penance for your desecration. Yeah, well, I got your penance hanging, you big gold. Uh-oh. Well, he's coming back, and boy, does he look ticked. Face it, kid. This guy is way out of your league. ba wang -yum. Gotta get a win. I'd like to see... Kid Supreme team up with Bad Rock. I'd like to see Kid Supreme, Jubilee, and Bad Rock all on an awesome team together. That'd be fun. Teenage team. X-teens. That's what, that's what I call X-teens. Well, where were we here? He, he, he beat him so easily. Kid Supreme shouldn't have been up there, Riptide. Whatever, Kiever. At least he did something. I say we... Attention! Attend me, peoples of Earth. I am Imperion. We of the Keep have returned to your world to collect that which is rightfully ours, the new gene positive among you. Yikes. Do not attempt to resist us. Do not attempt to thwart us. We have evaluated your defensive capabilities, and they are as nothing to us. Those of you who do not possess the new gene have nothing to fear from us. We have no need of you. But be the assured of this. Any attempt to attack a keep vessel, any attempt to impede us in the gathering of a harvest, and we will annihilate your planet. So speaks Empyrean. So speaks the keep. Wow, he is serious. The UN building. You did this. You and all the other freaks. We should just turn the lot of you over to them. Looks like the crowd is getting ugly. I said we get out of Dodge. I believe you're right, Dusk. In this case, at least. Discretion may be the better part of valor. They didn't hear a word I said. It's not us who brought the keep here, but it was they who sired us. I think we got a situation here on several fronts. I agree. The question remains, how do we proceed? Well... Let's start by rescuing the kid. I think we should start planning our battle strategy. They may retaliate for Kid Supreme's stupidity. No, we have to find a peaceful solution. Violence will only lead to untold numbers of unnecessary death. And I say there is no choice. No matter what you do, there will be wholesale slaughter of innocent lives. I am the Maximage. And I say we must protect the Earth, and we must protect our new gene brethren, at any cost. To be continued in Maximage number two, but any of you who watched uh, my review of Maximage issue number one right here on Crypto Comics, you already know that I do not have Maximage two because that first comic was pretty much trash. So we're going to skip it. But we will look at what's going on in here. Ooh, profit number four. Look at this guy. This guy looks great. I love it. I'm filling this this villain. I hope it's a villain. He looks like he should be a villain. Oh, Youngblood action figures. There they are. I made a crypt action figure. Wow. Okay. Let's keep moving on here, people. We'll skip part two in Maxim Age and head right into part three. New man. Number one. Don't get confused. This is not new men. This is new man. I actually enjoyed this one. Uh -huh. Okay, first session. Today is December 8th, 2080, the first time. I'd like to establish a framework summary first. I'll get into the details later. I'm 80 years old, almost 81. I've led a full life, I think. I've had friends, I've had, I will have, enemies. 
I've survived terrible tragedies and run headlong into trouble. This script is by Eldon Asp. Pencils are by Manny Clark. It sometimes seems I've wasted my whole life running, but somehow I've always found time to lose the people I've loved. <sighs> I found time to lose a few fights too, I suppose. <laughs> uh, a few more than a few. And uh, I've fallen in love with an angel. More on that later. I've battled the devil himself, one of them anyway, on his, on his terms, in his realm. I've fought alongside aliens on alien worlds. Uh, note to self, check Wildcat's databank circa 1997. Lynette would like photos. Occasionally when I was younger, in the past or in the future, I would like to find time to relax and reflect. But the keep always knew where I was. And they always, always, always knew where I was going. Hmm. Except the one time, which is, I guess, the reason I'm writing this book in the first place. The first time I set my own course. The present. Shepard! Newman! I, I do not understand. Why would our master send you and I both to conquer so minor a world? The keep didn't send me, Shepard. Rob Liefeld presents New Day Dawning. I see. Then why are you here? Answer carefully. Don't threaten me, Shepard. I'll kill you. I've come to talk. If that is your wish. Alone. Very well, but tell me, where has the girl gone? I have dealt with the sorceress. She's of no further concern. Then say what you have come to say. Your childish pyrotechnics annoy me. The fact you're alive annoys me, Shepard. Watch your step. That's two threats now, correct? Exactly. No more warnings. Now come on, lapdog. When I said alone, I meant alone. We're just going to disappear and go talk somewhere else. Meanwhile, in the Pentagon, uh, Youngblood and Lady Supreme are all uh, bent out of shape trying to figure out what to do. And then, uh, and then my boy Nightsaber shows up and says, Loose cannons. Listen, boss. I've yelled me... Loose cannons. Listen, boss. I've yelled me tongue long enough. But I've got to interject. This exercise has got me remembering something me mum used to say. Give your head a shake, son. The troops need a plan, boys. You're not helping things, Mick. Why don't you... Yeah, all right. Oi, Tim Man. What say you take Dorothy here and bugger off down the yellow brick road? Consider yourself lucky there is a global crisis today, Nightsaber. At present, we must concern ourselves with the disappearance of the Maxim Age. Oh, I wouldn't worry about her right now, diehard. Well, what? What the? Now? No. Right now, you're facing much bigger problems. It felt strange to finally confront them all. I mean, I'd known them forever. Their pasts, their futures. It was weird. Let's see, there was Bad Rock the Boy of Stone. You all know him. And there was Vogue and Alan Kiever and Night Saber and Sentinel and one of the really old diehard models. I played the superhero. Heroes of Earth, heed my warning. You must cease your petty bickering, for it is truly your planet's darkest hour. You must instead act before it is too late. N now, we've never met. I I'm Alan Kiever. Uh, yes, well, what I'm wondering is, who are you? What do you know about the keep? Shh! If you expect... I never could tolerate a bureaucrat, unless they're frozen. Huh, I just froze you. Now, if there are no other questions... I suggest we get to work. And then, you know, they get in this fight because Youngblood just is, you know, a little confused here. But thankfully, you know, Newman's going to set him straight. If you're all finished attacking me, we may proceed with saving the world. Your opponents in this struggle, the Keep, far outstrip you in both technology and intelligence. If we are to defeat them, I must have your complete trust. I offer you this person in return. Hey, what's going on? Who is this guy? Oh, Kiever. Now, may we begin? The wrong side of the tracks. I told you to keep him coming. Listen, pal, I got a license to consider. Ain't you had enough? No, I'll tell you when I've had enough, boy. And I ain't saying when just yet. Let's make him sound like Mr. T, what do you say? I told you to keep him coming. Listen, pal, I got a license to consider. Ain't you had enough? No, I'll tell you when I've had enough, boy. 
and I ain't saying when, just yet. Now, now, wow, would you look at the cans on that? What's a girl like you doing in a place like this, woman? You're a chapel, yes. Yeah, babe, I'm everything you need. Come on, woman, let me show you what a real man is. Sorry, I, I'm going to take a little liberties because I can. Good, let's go. Hey, what? The Keep had already imprisoned many of Earth's new gene positives aboard their ships. It was a scary time for those kids. I don't think they ever got over it. Kodiak, bird, I'm so glad you're alive. Uh, yeah, me too. Now, these are the kids from uh, the, the new men. Not, not new man, but new men. Remember, we, we, we covered this previously on Crypto Comics. It was uh, uneventful, to say the least. But, strangely enough, uh, some of those characters, not just the main characters, but one of the villains from that first uh, new men issue is actually going to make an appearance during this Extreme Destroyer crossover event. I'm so glad you're alive. Uh, yeah, me too. Hey, what's up with Cody? What did you do to him? Answer me. I did nothing, not paying attention. Whatever. Pardon me, bootleg, but I could try probing his mind for some clue. Thanks, silence. But I'm not real wild about that idea. Bird, what can you tell us? How were you captured? Can't tell you much about Kodiak, I'm afraid, pilot. I was blindsided by some bounty hunters and then sold, I guess. A bit of advice, earthlings. Concern yourselves not with how you got here, but rather with what is to become of you next. Hmm, interesting. As I saw it, the first order of business was to bring all the heroes up to speed with the story behind the keep. The same applies here, too, I think. I'll try to remember it accurately. Long before the birth of this universe, history stood witness to the births and deaths of a billion others. The story I'm about to tell begins in one of those other systems, among the swirling planets of another sun. From the black depths of the void sprang forth a sea of new planets. And in time, the planets collided and conjoined and fused, becoming a single monolithic sphere, larger by far than even the giant Jupiter. And upon this world, life evolved. And evolved. And evolved. Until evolution reached its apex, with a race collectively labeled the Keep. In their early stages, the Keep inhabited a paradise, a peaceful and perfect balance of nature and technology. But as perfect balances so often do, this one shifted and collapsed. Nature fell by the wayside, reduced to the raw materials and the Keep's relentless pursuit of technological perfection. Eventually, nature lost its domination over even the most basic processes of life and death. The Keep had taken over the world. And when their technology came to function too well, when death by natural causes was just a bitter memory, the Keep found their enormous, gigantic, colossal planet too small. The scientists became warriors. Land became the ultimate prize, and the powers they developed for creation and sustenance they now used for destruction, with equal success. And their planet heaved and groaned and died around them. The Keep made their final mad leap and merged with their technology. They became living ships and roamed the galaxies in search of a new home. During this quest, they developed a virus, which we today call the New Gene. The virus infected the environments of a dozen worlds, and the superpowered carriers of the new gene were harvested at regular intervals to act as slaves aboard the keep ships. What we are witnessing today is the latest harvest. All right, time out here, super guy. I've been around a long time. How come I never heard of no harvests? Hmm, curious. Perhaps you weren't paying attention. My point is that technology can do as much harm as good, and the advancement of technology at the expense of natural and sentient life must be stopped. The keep must be stopped. Well, that much is clear, but how do you propose we perform such a daunting task? Technology is both their strength and their weakness. Their ships may be disabled, but only from the inside. Great, so what are you telling us for then? Well, I wouldn't bother explaining my plan. If I didn't expect you to carry it out. Phew, a good start, I think. 
or next session. Check out New Man Number 2 for more insight into the mystery man, and be on the lookout for the next chapter of Extreme Destroyer in the pages of Youngblood Number 4. Believe it or not, I'm actually going to pick up the rest of New Man. I kind of am digging this guy. I don't know anything about him, but I like the... Oh, look at this. A wraparound cover here, folks. How about that? Isn't that bloody nice? I sure think so. Looks great to me. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. Yeah, I'm kind of digging this character. I like this, uh, this narrative device they have here where he's writing a book in the future at 80 years old, or maybe it's in the past. I'm not really sure what it is, but I, I, I'm intrigued enough to want to find out more. And that is what a good comic is supposed to do, isn't it? Now, how about this? Youngblood number four. This is not a flip book. This does not have a wraparound cover. Did I say flip book earlier? I meant wraparound cover. Um, Extreme Story Part 4. Again, this, uh, this is this amazing art by Roger Cruz. Uh, I love it. Christian Lichner's colors in this are absolutely phenomenal. And I've, I've, talked, about, I've talked about Roger Cruz in our, in our Young Blood Volume 2 review and how phenomenal of a job he did. Um, and this is all right. Vogue is, Vogue is upset. She's crying because her relationship with... Look, I love the way this guy draws women. I really do. He is perhaps the finest artist to combine manga and the American style. This is phenomenal. And she's just upset because of her relationship with Die Hard, and she thinks that it's, it's coming to an end, and he's not giving her the attention that she needs. You know the ladies, right? And so Night Saber shows up with that, Oh, come on, young... Oh, come on, Vogue Love. He's a blatant computer. What else did you expect? What you need to do is come on down to Perth and find yourself a nice guy like Risey Lee. He'll take good care of you. Keep you well stocked in all that fine storage naya you Ruskies like. Mm-hmm. Rub your feet every night, suck your toes. Risey Lee will take care of you, love. Come on down to Perth, Sheila. And Vogue is just pissed and she's just, Shut up, Night Saber! Shut up or so help me, I'll... Sit down, Vogue. Our current situation notwithstanding, this is hardly the place for that sort of outburst. Or for your boorish humor, Mick. Oops. Hi there, Kiva. So the new man is, you know, going to get them all to join together. And of course, Mr. Dredd, who I'm not a fan of this character at all. Very dumb. Uh, he's in charge now. He's the new boss of Youngblood. In Battlestone, he's disappeared. Nobody, nobody knows where Battlestone is. Same for Shaft. Well, at least on this team, they don't know where they're at. But up in the slave-holding pens of the Keep Imperial Cruiser Obedience, there's Glory, Cougar, Brahma, Elemental, Girth, and Shaft. Remember? I had talked about Elemental earlier. This is the guy who was the villain in New Men, number one, that we reviewed here on Crypto Comics. Uh, he actually, he's in this. I would have never guessed that that was going to happen. And Shaft is just like a major depression case. He is super upset that he might have the new gene and be a dirty mutie. <laughs> and Elemental looks a lot cooler in this than he did in New Men Number One. I will say that. Pathetic. Wouldn't you agree, Girth? Ain't that always the case? Yes, I suppose. But Shaft's depression underlies a salient point in our own dilemma. Our situation is hopeless if we remain on this slave cruiser much longer. Meaning? Meaning we have to escape you, buffoon. What, are you saying you've got a plan? I have more than a plan. I have a device attached to my person, capable of transporting us both off of this ship. Meanwhile in Peru, Chapel and the Extreme Warrior have found this, this wrecked ship. Uh, Totally on coincidence, you know, she was transported there by the Maxi Mage and the Extreme Warriors there and yeah, and there's all of a sudden Battlestone and Cabot in stasis. So that's interesting. And Forsyth interrupts this conversation to explain that Quantum, who's one of the supervillains in uh, the Extreme Studios universe, is gone. He's just disappeared. 
And of course, new man says, don't worry about anything. I have the situation under control. Hmm, very interesting. Whew. Nice two page spread. Meanwhile, almost on cue, the first phase of the new man's plan materializes aboard the keep's mothership in full force. We've arrived. So far it would appear the new man can be taken at his word. Yeah, and we could be taken for one heck of a crazy ride. I feel like I'm gonna toss a year's worth of cookies. Attend to your illness quietly then, Badrock. Your incessant bellowing is sure to betray our presence here. This is Roman, king of the seas. He's Namor. Huh, troll? Oh God, doesn't she just look smoking hot? Yeah, Riptide. Awesome, Riptide and Vogue. I would, I would like to take a shower with them. I'm telling you, troll, one of these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I haven't heard that once or twice in the last 2,000 years. 2,000 years is a long time, troll. And it encompasses 10 prior visits by our alien visitors. Doesn't it seem odd to you that you have no recollection of their presence here at all? It's a moot point right now, Wilder. Because regardless of whether or not Troll has encountered the Keep in the past, our present concern is infiltrating this ship. This looks like the corridor the new man described in our briefing. So we might as well start making our way into the heart of the ship. This is highly peculiar. We've been aboard this vessel and haven't been attacked. They've been here for half an hour. Nobody's even, they haven't spotted anybody. They haven't been attacked, nothing. And she's just, oh, listen to him. How confident he sounds. I'm clearly the... I'm clearly the furthest thing from his mind right now. All this time I've been such a fool. I thought Die Hard and I had a solid relationship, that he loved me. But he's been dis so disinterested in me lately, that I find it impossible to believe he ever had feelings for me at all, or even feelings, period, for that matter. He's just a big, dirty robot. And Riptide's just thinking about their relationship, too, and how Die Hard acts like he's just as alien as the Keep. The boy is Kid Supreme. When the Keep first arrived on Earth, he was the first to challenge their might. It was a valiant effort, but equally as futile. The old man is the ancient. This is the guy that made her the Maxi Mage. How about that? I finally have an answer to who the hell these people are. If you recall, when we reviewed Maxi Mage issue number one, I was thoroughly disappointed with confusing art and a nonsensical story. You can go check that out in the playlist, too, if you want to, right here on Crypto Comics. A new gene-positive sorcerer of untold age, he was imprisoned by the Keep as penance for a lifetime of defiance. He liberated himself only recently, and has wasted no time in procuring two pupils with whom he could share his wisdom, Kid Supreme, and the Earth's newest protector, the Maximage. Hey, old man, wake up, I'm back. What? Maximage, you've broken my concentration. Bam! Oh, man. What the heck is going on? I'm afraid I share Kid Supreme's confusion, Maximage. Why have you returned? Meanwhile, elsewhere... I don't know why Rubble is, like, a f two feet tall in this. He's not a midget in the other comics. This makes no sense. Like, is he on his knees? What is happening? Since delivering expository speeches is neither my desire nor my forte, I'll give you the short answer. She's here because I willed it so. Now come, Ancient. I have need of you. Oh, this isn't elsewhere. He, he appeared with all these people. Hmm, this, yeah, I didn't. My mind was not able to bridge the gap between these two panels here. It's uh, important for you young artists. There should have been something more. Maybe the glowing of the light behind her would have helped with that. Hey, what about me? Don't worry, kid. I'll fetch for you soon enough. For now, though, I think it's best that your recent defeat at the hands of the shepherd resonate in your mind as a lesson in patience. Yeah, kid, hurry up and wait. Hmm, 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 hmm. I don't want that page to bend that way. The mothership. <laughs> All of a sudden, this guy named Black Jack Banning shows up with a group called the New Guard. I'm not familiar with them. They're gonna fight. Doesn't that look like Prime from the Ultraverse? Except he's not nearly as interesting as Prime. If you're not familiar with Prime, in the Malibu Comics Ultraverse playlist here on Crypto Comics, you can watch an awesome video on Prime issue number one. I think you'd really enjoy it. 
But anyways, there's gonna, you know, there's gonna be a fight. There's gonna be amazing two page spread. How about that? Isn't that lovely? And uh, you know, Blackjack disappears in the melee. And uh, here's our boy again, the shepherd. Curious, Blackjack's new god, are faring even better than I'd predicted. But he appears to have vanished in the melee. I warned Communion about allowing Blackjack to participate in the harvest of his homeworld, but his will is done. It is a concern for another time, so they're just going to fight. And then there's this chick. I'm excited to talk about this chick here today, too. Lord Dredsa, where are we going? To ensure that today's series of happy accidents hasn't endangered the one constant in the soup of variables I've carefully brought to a simmer, Kaya. I should curse myself a thousand times for choosing that lifeless wretch Battlestone as my cornerstone here. So I'm afraid your point eludes me. It won't for long, Kia, especially if Sci-Fire is... Gone? Extreme Destroyer continues in glory number nine, which I, I don't have, but that's okay. I want to read this. Congratulations to Glenn Lewis. Yes, yes, yes. A winner is announced. I've been waiting for this, to be honest with you. Glenn Lewis, age 14, of Tacoma, Washington. High five for the great state of Washington. And his creation, Kaya, have been handpicked by Rob Liefeld as the grand prize winner in the Young Blood Create Your Own Character Contest. Rob looked through literally thousands of entries before narrowing it down to just one. And let me tell you, it was by no means an easy task. Now, for those of you not in the know about the contest and what it means to this one lucky winner, let me give you a rundown of what Youngblood's newest member and her creator have won. Kaya will now be appearing in the pages of Youngblood for the coming year, and perhaps longer depending on how things work out. Plus, she will have her own Skybox International trading card and will come to three-dimensional life by having an action figure created of her silvery form. What do we even know about Kaya at this point, you ask? Well, according to Glenn, Kaya is a cybernetic mystery woman with ties to Youngblood's past. That, of course, is just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. The truth surrounding her origins will be explored in the coming months as we learn a little bit more about what makes this lady tick. So everyone, let us know what you think of the team's latest edition. And, of course, your reactions to our Extreme Destroyer Mega Crossover! Oh, Christian. Great book. Written by Rob Liefeld. Art by uh, Pop Mon, who has actually become... An artist I'm really interested in finding out more about and seeing what else this gentleman has done because got a lot of talent. Got a unique style that I like. It's always what I'm looking for, folks. You know that? Hey, 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 hey. Should we keep going here or should we wait? Guess what's next? New Force number one. What? That's right. We have another number one issue that is part of the Extreme Destroyer line. It's actually kind of sad that Rob quickly left Image after these came out because uh, he introduced three, I believe three new characters just for this, New Man, New Force, and then Operation Night Strike, which was, I wanna say it's Dutch and Cable and maybe Cabot and somebody else. I'm not into military books, so I, I actually didn't pick that up. I apologize if I should have. And then this dude shows up, and I was just like, what is happening here? This is what happens when you, when you skip, you know, a few issues. We're jumping from part four to part eight here, just to uh, get through this. Let's find out what's happened so far. In a single day and night, the Keep have secured complete control over the Earth, and have begun to gather many of its heroes, including members of the New Men and Youngblood. The remaining heroes have banded together to see if there is some way their combined might can avert this world-shattering force. Aided by the New Man and Maximage, the heroes have infiltrated the Keep Armada in hopes of destroying the menace from within. Meanwhile, Lady Supreme has suffered a debilitating defeat at the hands of the Shepherd after probing his mind to learn the whereabouts of the original Supreme. Simultaneously, Quantum has helped the Night Strike team free the heroes captured by the New Guard and return them to Earth. Script by Eric Stevenson. Pencils by Todd Nock. This character is really interesting. It turns out that this is Exit from the New Men. The New Men, I, I guess they're evolving or maybe it's devolving. Uh, and, it, and that occurs, I believe it begins in New Men issue 18 and concludes, I think, with uh, issue 20. Kodiak is kind of like regressing into just a pure beast. He's losing his human, his human elements. 
The same goes with Bird, who is, well, I mean, he's turning into a bird, a pterodactyl or something. I don't know. This chick is Sundanced. I don't want you to get confused. This is not an amalgamation of Phoenix and Foxfire from Malibu. She's there. She's she's was, you know, created by the keep and she's loyal to the keep, but she's, you know, having second fillings. Sundance. Shepard, forgive me if I startled you, but the situation on Earth has escalated to the point that I am needed once more. I have come to speak with the one called Dash. The speedster? I I thought you knew. You know better than to toy with me, child. Where is she? Stop. I don't want to hear any more. But you don't understand, girl. You don't have a choice in the matter. I know you have every... I know you have very little reason to listen to or believe what I'm saying. But you have to trust me. I have nothing to gain from doing this. Whoop. This is this is Blackjack Banning. He also was created by the Keep and, you know, is here to dominate the Earth. He was the leader of the New Guard that they fought in that, in that last issue we read. Well, at least we can agree on that. Shepard would kill you if he knew what you were up to. Which is precisely why you need to realize what a mistake you're making if you let him suck you into this life. The keep are evil, Dash. Why can't you see that? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? You obviously felt differently about them at some point. Oh my god, like, this is a new comic skater and this is a first wave comic skater. Yes, but I was easily manipulated then. I was led astray and then let down by a man. But the shepherd isn't a man. He's different. I can feel it in my heart, my soul. He's everything I long to be. Or so you think now. I wanted the same things once, and I was tempted by the power the shepherd possesses, the awe he was greeted with. But in the end, it wasn't worth it. He takes his mask off. It wasn't worth this. <gasps> what does his hideous face look like? I don't know, but we'll find out maybe. And so... Elemental just kind of like falls out in the wrong place and ends up here and he's just like, oh man, I'm not supposed to be here. And they're like, hey, we're going to fight you. And he's like, nope, I'm out. And he disappears. Uh, let's just keep going forward here. Nice two-page spread. I'm really feeling this new look on Exit. I, I actually liked his look uh, at the beginning of the New Men series. I thought he actually looked really cool, but here he looks way badass. I'm I'm questioning if he got turned into a vampire, maybe. I'm not positive, you know. It's it's compelling me to want to pick up the New Men series. Maybe skip the first, you know, ten issues or so. And then jump in in the second half of the series and see what the heck has happened. This guy. I don't know who he is, but he says, See, see, exit, but to remind us to... Con I like this guy, but let me set it up for you. Well, what do you know? I actually did it. See, he... He teleported them to a place that he'd never been and never seen just by this gentleman sharing a memory of it, a thought of it with him, and he was able to do it. CC exit, but remind us to congratulate you later. At a glance, it looks like the bottom of the ninth with the home team down by... What? He's a Mexican, right? Like, shouldn't he be, like, making a comparison to soccer? I mean, maybe it's just me. You. Who? Rain. Rain, you're alive! And kicking, zrap! So, you know, we're gonna have a little bit of fight. Shepard is the, is the character we really need to pay attention to in this. I, I will have no part in this chaos. If she is not here, I must assume the worst. Banning has betrayed us all. Blackjack? At the Pentagon, you know, he's, he's checking it out, and then he's surprised, because all of a sudden, here's... Prophet and Kid Supreme and Masada and Rubble and Fusion and they're back and we're gonna fight. Uh, well, uh, yeah, this is Wally. Wally is the assistant of Vanguard, Eric Larson's Vanguard. Well, uh, yeah, but what's the story with this wreck? It's not one of yours, is it? It is! It is! We're saved! Man, Kiever is so stoked because all of a sudden, you know, everybody showed up. Major Bravo's here. Wilder's here. Chapel's here. I'm still not really sure how Chapel's alive. But Dutch is there. We got, we got a bunch of people to help save the day. 
Your impetuous little friends have succeeded quite well at disrupting our harvest quantum. A pity that a disruption is all they will have been when this is through. Their actions can make no difference. Of course not. I realized that fairly early in the game communion. <laughs> Just as I realized that responsibility would fall to me. What? Quantum's turning good, but he's a villain. Ah, oh, what a guy. What a guy. Elsewhere, aboard the ship, that sound. There is fighting within as there is without. And I, I am flying around like an unenlightened fool. And why? Because of a mortal woman? My mind, everything I know, tells me to heed the call to battle, to defend the honor and glory of the keep. But my heart, silent for so long, why does it speak to me in so different a terminology? What I'm feeling, it's blasphemy. Yet I must, I must find her. And all of a sudden he's attacked. Shoom! Let it be said, it is a cowardly foe who, who. We really need to talk. Uh-oh, he's in trouble with the ladies. The shepherd down, Earth's heroes on the move, dash triumphant, and where the heck is Imperion? This juggernaut comes to a full stop quicker than you think in the pages of the Extreme Destroyer epilogue. Cool, we're gonna get to that. There's that Pop Mon art again, I love that Christian. Oh, Cyberpunks, I have this. I decided to skip it for Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month and subsequently Rob Liefeld Appreciation Season. But you know, maybe in the future we'll see what it's uh, all about. Ooh, Lady Pendragon. This also did not make the cut for Maximum Press. I'm saving it for the future for a very special reason I'm not prepared to share at this time. But I will tell you what it's about. King Arthur and his knights lay dead on the field of battle. The land is divided and threatened with invasion from across the sea. Destiny calls to Arthur's queen as Excalibur rises one last time. So it's going to be a chick with Excalibur. Okay, that's fun. I like it. I dig it. I feel it. Okay, I hope y'all are ready for this. Y'all ready for this? Bum, 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 bum. Y'all ready for this? Extreme Destroyer epilogue. This is where the ish hits the fan. We got all these diehard 3,000 units that cost $3 billion a piece to, to build, all getting ready to go into battle to save the Earth. So let's see what's happening here. The remaining heroes have banded together to see if there's some way their combined might can avert this world-shattering force. Aided by the new man and Maximage, the heroes have infiltrated the Keep Armada in hopes of destroying the alien menace from within. Meanwhile, members of the new men... Meanwhile, members of the New Men have made their own attempt at rescuing their captured comrades. Simultaneously, Quantum has begun his attack on the Keep hierarchy, starting with Communion, while Dash has managed to wrest control of the Shepherd's power staff. All this while the remaining heroes make a final stand in their battle against the Keep. At stake, the freedom of the entire New Gene population of Earth. Written by Jim Valentino and Robert Lauren Fleming. Digging it. Yeah, we got a big fight going on here, huh? This is just kind of going to catch us all up on what's happened in all of the other issues contained in the Extreme Destroyer crossover. And we just keep going here, right? Oh, look, even Super Patriot made the cut. That's fun. Here we go. My staff is the only thing that could hurt me, Dash. Use Notice how the lettering has changed. That's interesting. This is not his lettering. Weird. My staff is the only thing that can hurt me, Dash. Use it to strike me down. I won't raise a hand against you. you. You're trying to confuse me, just like Blackjack said you would. He said that I should put aside my feelings and see you for what you are, a merciless killer. But I can't believe it's true. Even though I saw with my own eyes what you did to his face. We each get the face we deserve, Dash. Blackjack is torn by self-doubt and twisted with self-hatred. So when he experienced the great change, those characteristics were etched upon his features. The great change? Is, is that what's happening to me now? Yes. Your feelings for me triggered the cosmic energy within my staff, revealing your true potential. You are a goddess, Dash. I, I look like you. My feelings were right then. We are the same, you and I. More than that, we were meant for each other. My beautiful bride. Ooh, how romantic. So Blackjack is going to, you know, kick some butt.
but then he gets killed for being a traitor. Are you all right? No, just leave me and save yourself. My insides feel as torn up as my face. Guess it's time for another <coughs> great change. Whoa. Blackjack Banning died. Not that I actually care because I have no idea who he is, but that's okay. Uh, back on Earth, we're going to keep having a big old fight here, and this broad who's been wanting to kill Battlestone for some time, she decides, you know, she's not going to do it there. You know, maybe later. Maybe she'll have her shot later. Kiever and Dredder, you know, coming hand to he head to head. Um, this, this, this poor little shaft, Jeff is so upset and so despondent that he can't even engage in the battle. He's so upset that he might be a new Gene Muti. Unbelievable. <laughs> Sentinel had to rescue him because he was about to get killed in the battle. Had to fly him back to home base. So he could have his mental health taken care of. You will pay for destroying communion, Earthling. He was a personal favorite of mine. Oh, I feel bad. I read communion more like a woman. You won't have long to mourn, Empyrean. Prepare yourself to join your friend. You have spirit. After I've broken you, I will make you my personal servant. I can't believe that a villain like Quantum is actually defending us. Of course he is. He's a local boy. Oh, I like that. We're just going to skip the fighting. Shepard, I know there's good in you, but I'm, I'm not a fool. You serve the keep, and they're evil. How can you do that? And all of a sudden, his lettering is back. Weird. Not quite, though, because his lettering was a, a digital font, and this is hand-drawn. For good or evil. They missed the I. For good or evil, they made me what I am, Dash. How can I turn my back on them? Would you rather turn your back on me? Please, Shepard, help me save my people. We can be happy here on Earth together. I cannot betray the keep. Do not ask me to do that. They can't love you like I can. Listen to your heart, Shepard. I know it will tell you to do the right thing. I am torn, it is true. For the first time in my life, I know not which way to turn. How emotional. We made you well, Earthling. You stand up to much punishment. I'm not a product, alien. I'm a man, perhaps. But we will soon blow up this world, rendering such distinctions moot. You're planning to destroy the entire planet? Not in your wildest dreams! I do not know how to dream. Look out! The alien ships, they're retreating. It must have been my Bruce Lee moves that scared them away. Bruce Lee? I, I thought you were doing Betty Boop. You think it has anything to do with Quantum taking out the big guy? Uh, that seems like a safe bet, Rock. Maximage, we must hurry and free the people on those ships before it's too late. You sound like you have a plan, new man. Of course I do. My power of teleportation is too limited to free so many people at once. So you need my powers added to yours as a sort of energy surge to boost your range and capacity. It's worth a try. I'll give you all I've got. It's working. I've managed to teleport every last hostage away from the alien ships and onto the grass of that park just below us. That's not grass. That's mud. Maximage, brave girl. The Earth is truly fortunate to have such a protector. Why do I still live, Earthling? Why have you not destroyed me? Because I know your rules of conflict, alien, and plan to use them to my planet's advantage. By defeating you, I have made you my slave, just as you enslaved so many of my kind over the centuries. It is true that you have the right to command me. What would you have me do first? Leave this planet and never come back. Yes, master. We are going now, little one. I can feel it. Will you come with me? You know that I can't. My place is here. Even if that means I'm no longer a goddess, you will always be a goddess, Dash, because there will always be one who worships you. Oh, doesn't that just make your heart flutter, fellas? My planet is so beautiful from way up here, isn't it, Shepard? It is worthy of you, my love. Oh, jeez, what a smooth talker. Listen to me, all of you. I'm going with the keep. They are mine to command now, but I trust them not once they're out of my sight. At the very least, 
I will make certain that they never again return to trouble the earth. What a guy! He's on his way to pillage the universe, but he still has time to drop a load of happy horse manure on us. Yep. Once a jerk, always a jerk. I don't give a damn what any of you think of me. That's good, Father. Because we don't think much of you. Let those be our parting words then, my son. What? That's his dad? Wow. Surprise, surprise. Spoiler alert. At least you made it easy for me to leave. Dash, I knew I was right about you two. Let us depart, Sundance. No, Shepard. I've decided to stay here. And I've decided to go. In her place. Huh? You can't be serious. Watch me, and Bird's just going to take off. The time has come, O oh great Imperion, for you to take us into your body as the vessel of all that is good and great. Hey, Imperion's turning into a spaceship, just like one of those Japanese robots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just like one of those Japanese robots. That's right. Well, they're gone for now, but Quantum's the original bad penny. He'll turn up when we least expect it. Perhaps. But if he wanted to rule the world, he could have accomplished that today. Goodbye, Shepard, my love. Goodbye, Dash, goddess of my heart. Uh, before you take off, new man, Link's having a bit of trouble with his teleportation device. Yeah, that energy surge from your link-up with Maximage seems to have shorted out my circuits, so Bravo and I were wondering... Whether I'd drop you back in your own time period? Certainly. Just hang on while I... Um... While I... Hmm. I guess that energy surge affected my own teleportation powers as well. It looks like we're stuck here, gentlemen. Oh, great. Ah, rats. Foiled again. So we won a few and lost a few, but the final victory was ours, and we gained new and crucial information about the new gene along the way. This at a cost of untold millions in property damage and a rising toll of civilian casualties. Far too many, in my opinion. And he sums everything up and says, As for my own team, Youngblood, the toll was thankfully minimal, except perhaps for my blood pressure, and any hopes I ever had for getting along with the new boss. And I'm still very worried about Shaft, who may yet turn out to be another casualty of this war. A penny for your thoughts, Shaft. My thoughts aren't worth a penny, Glory. Are you still troubled because you might be new gene positive? <sighs> it will always trouble me. God, dude, it's not HIV. Shut the hell up. Or worse yet, that I might already be one. What do you mean? You're the same person you've always been. Really? What if my skills didn't come from years of hard work and practice? What if it's the new gene that makes me what I am? I've always defined myself by sweat and tears. I've taken pride in the fact that a normal man could walk with gods and beings from other planets and measure up. Oh, well, okay. I like that. I like that, Shaft. That's cool. Who likes being a human? Shaft, you think too much. It's a beautiful day out there. We just won back our world. I, for one, am going to celebrate. And as for your new gene, I'm absolutely certain that the only power it's given you is the ability to spread gloom. So... If you want to walk with the gods, this one is inviting you out into the sunshine. And by the way, my power is that I won't take no for an answer. Loving it. Oh, oh, look at that. What, what? Yeah, you better believe your boy Crypto has that in his long boxes, just waiting for all of you beautiful people in Webtown to share it with. And that's going to come later during Rob Liefeld Appreciation Season. But this has been a very long video. For me, it was an enjoyable video because we were able to see some new characters that we never met before. And I actually found one that I'm interested in hanging out with some more. And that's always cool. And ultimately, we have now seen the final crossover from Rob Liefeld's Extreme Studios at Image Comics. This has been Extreme Destroyer. If you enjoyed it, please share this video with your friends. Don't be afraid to hit that thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, hit the ding dong for notifications. Then thump the thump the thump 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 the thump the thump thump the thump the thump thumb your way over to megawattcomic.com and support your boy Crypto's Kickstarter 
for Megawatt versus the Vampires of the Sun. I can't do it without you people. I don't know if we are going to do it. But one thing I'm definitely going to do, whether you support me or not, I'm going to be back here with another totally awesome comic book review for Rob Liefeld Appreciation Month on Crypto Comics tomorrow. So thanks for giving me an hour of your day to show you a, a really unique crossover that's an important part of Rob Liefeld's history. And I will see you again right here on Crypto Comics.